Hello, Jeremy Chambers, Independence Acres Homestead here. Thank you for joining us for the second in our series on processing your rabbits on your homestead. This is the second video in the series that deals specifically with the harvesting of rabbits that you've grown on your homestead. Now in this video, we're gonna be going over the evisceration. We covered dispatch in the last video. So here we're gonna be going through the entire um, removal of the innards of the rabbit, uh, getting it all the way to preparation of going in the freezer. Alright, so now we're going to hang, and the great thing about the hopper hanger is it is, um, takes a lot of the guesswork out of hanging your rabbit. So you're going to set your rear hawk in and wrap the foot around. And it's going to go just like that. Alright, now it's the uh, time for the decapitation here. We'll bring in just a little closer. Alright, now, point of decapitation, you want to find what we like to do is we like to grab the ears, all right, pull down, find the base of the skull. And we're just going to put our knife right at the base of the skull, go through the skin, and then one quick push. And that's it. Decapitation is done. Once a rabbit's hanging and decapitated, um, we like to let it hang for about a, you know, 35, 45 seconds, uh, just to let some of that blood that's accumulated in the neck uh, during the cervical dislocation, let that drain into the bucket, and then uh, we'll begin the skinning process. Once your rabbit is up and hanging, now it's time to begin skinning. We're gonna start at the rear legs, just like skinning most of any small game, even large game, deer, uh, pigs, you know, anything that you're going to skin, the process is going to be just about the same. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut uh, right around in a circle right where the rear hock is resting in the hopper hanger here. Now, you don't want to go too deep because you don't want to cut through tendons. All right, so you're going to pull the skin away just a little bit and make a circle around. Now, this is where you will know whether or not your knife is sharp. If you can't make it through that skin right there, then it's time for you to go and sharpen your knife. This is also the one point where you're going to begin to see the most fur flying, especially for now. We're in the middle of the summer, so uh, the rabbits have molted a little bit, uh, and so they're, they're losing a little bit of hair. So it's important to have your helper, all right, have your helper there ready with the hose to rinse off the knife for you as you're going. All right, once we get our circles cut here, now what we're going to do is we're going to start here at the genital area. There's a buck, there's a testicle. All right, and uh, we're gonna start uh, in this area here at the genitals, and we're gonna make a slit. All right, in and out. Now we're gonna make a Y starting here at the genitals, and as you go, you wanna pull the skin up away from the meat so that you're not cutting into the meat. All right, and then once we get oh, a little sticky meat here. All right, all right, we do that side. And we're going to do on this side. Now, you, as you're doing this, you want to make sure you keep your hands away from the blade of your very sharp knife. All right, once you get up to your circles, now we're just going to use just uh, this part of the knife right here. And we're just going to cut away some of that connective tissue in order to get this thing to release. And we're going to go all the way around, we're going to go all the way around the leg on the top, and then once you get that done, if your rabbit is young and tender enough, that skin should just pull right off. So, we do the same thing on this other leg, all right, and 
pull it right down. Now, from this point, we're just gonna release some of this connective tissue. All right, and from here, you should have your rabbit de-skirted. Okay, now, the next step is we need to release the fur from around the tail. So, we're gonna work on removing some of this connective tissue uh, until we can actually slide our hand or our thumb or the knife between the pelt and the, uh, the back, uh, just at the base of the tail here. All right, so I'm just working to pull and trim some of that connective tissue. All right, so connective tissue is trimmed and I can stick my hand all the way through where the base of the tail is. And then we're gonna get right up where the tail meets the back. Nice firm grip of uh, the pelt and a nice firm grip on your knife. And you're just gonna go right through the tail. I like to leave a little tuft of fur around uh, the anus here for two reasons. Number one uh, is it uh, just leaves a little tuft of fur to trap any uh, urine or fecal matter that might still come out of the carcass while we're processing. Uh, and number two, it also gives me something to hold on to uh, while I'm trimming uh, around the rest of the, uh, around the rest of the tail uh, and uh, the uh, the anus there. Okay, so once we get to this point, now it's just a matter of uh, removing. It's kind of like removing a wet sock off of your foot. We're just going to kind of pull. Working it, working it down until it's inside out. And we've got the pelt hanging. From the carcass. Now, sometimes this comes off really easy. Sometimes it is a pain. Uh, and sometimes you just need to get in here with your knife and just trim a little bit of the connective tissue. Uh, in order to get it finished. There we go. And then we're going to pull down right until uh, we get just to the base of the feet. Now we're going to take our garden trimmers here, our garden loppers here, and uh, we're going to just use that to cut through that ankle bone and the tendons. There we have it. Now, if you are deciding to save your pelts, you're gonna go ahead and uh, turn this right side out and uh, pitch it in some cold water to chill it, uh, and then begin your processing on the pelts. Um, these are molting summer pelts, so we're not gonna be worrying about saving the pelts. All right, so once we get to this point, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give the carcass a good rinse down, uh, try to get as many of the stray hairs off as possible, and then uh, we'll get started on the evisceration. All right, we're going to start at this point of the rabbit right here. All right, so you can see there's a little hole right here. And what this is, uh, this is where the main blood vessel that attaches to uh, the belly skin comes through. So we're, going to, all right, so we're going to start right here, and we're going to split it up. All right, so we're going to pinch just below that vein hole, and we're going to use just the tip of the knife. And we're just going to use a flick of the wrist to get that hole started, all right? And now we're just, once again, tip of the knife. Once we get big enough, stick a finger in, stick a finger and pull it out. And you want to be careful at this point because you don't want to hit um, the, the bladder. All right. We're going to pull that open. And all right. So we do withhold food and water uh, for the feeding just before processing. And here's why. Because that's the bladder right there. It is not large, it's not full of urine, which is great. We don't want that squirting all over us or over the carcass as we're processing. And also, if you look at its intestines here, um, this is the last part of his large, his last part of his large intestine moving up to the anus. And uh, you know, it's not full of fecal matter, which is great. All right, so here we go. We're just gonna reach in there, pinch out the bladder, pinch right above the bladder, and we're just going to remove it. Now it's time to begin uh, working uh, around the anus and the urinary tract. All right, so 
Once again, we got this nice tuft of fur and we're just gonna use that as a handle here. We're gonna start removing some of this connective tissue between the thighs and the genital area in order to make it easier to remove. All right. Now on older rabbits, there's going to be a scent gland here. And you wanna be careful not to, not to punch that scent gland. Not that it's going to make your meat tainted or anything, it just kind of smells a little bit. This is about the only time you're gonna to get too much smell from rabbit. All right, we're gonna remove this connective tissue just to the front of the anus. There we go. Now, this is an important step. We're gonna wrap our hands around the thighs, fingers at the backbone, and we're gonna just pull it forward until you hear a pop. All right, what that does is it, it breaks the cartilage right here that hold the two hip bone together. All right, and now we're just gonna go through this tissue here until we get to that hip bone. All right, and you can see the knife just glides right between the hip bone there for the cartilage. All right, and we're just gonna go ahead and cut out the rest of that connective tissue between the hips, and then we can pull that uh, large intestine anus uh, right down. Now, we're gonna let that hang uh, right to the front of the rest of the carcass here while we finish the evisceration process uh, in order to keep that uh, from having any of that fecal matter coming out uh, and getting on the rest of the carcass. All right, so from here, we're just gonna take two fingers, right? Take two fingers and we're gonna spread that a little bit and we're just gonna split all the way down using just the tip of the knife, once again, because we don't wanna puncture any of those intestines split it down right to the breastbone. At this point, gravity's gonna do a lot of the work for you. All right, so we're just gonna start using our fingers and get in here and get at some of this uh, fat in here because um, we don't wanna have that in our carcasses. Now, if you wanna save it later, some people like to save that for uh, making sausage. We prefer to add pork fat to ours for making sausage, but some people have been known to, uh, to save that fat. This is a very healthy rabbit, not a lot of fat around the kidneys, which is good. Those are the first organs you're gonna encounter here. Uh, they're the shape of a kidney bean, hence the name kidney bean, because they look like kidneys, all right? But, and we're just gonna pull the kidneys out along with the fat that is around them. All right, we've got the pancreas here, which is nice and healthy. Remove this fat until we can get to some connective tissue right here. And then we'll get to the liver. So we got the liver, the stomach, small and large intestine. All right, and we're gonna just go ahead and cut through that, remove it until all we have left is what is the esophagus here, right? There's a little bit of blood in there, perfectly normal. And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut through that esophagus, being careful with our knife because we don't wanna cut ourselves. And then, right down in the cavity here, there are gonna be two, hopefully, nice pink lungs. Those are nice and healthy lungs in this rabbit. All right. So the reason there's so much blood up here is because gravity has done its job and pulled that down into the rest of the, uh, the, ab uh, the, uh, the chest cavity here. We're just gonna take two fingers right along the uh, rib cage. I'm going to reach down in and grab the heart and the lungs, the trachea and the esophagus. If you do it right, I'm going to rinse this off real quick. You see, you see a little better. There we go. If you do it right, you should be able to get it out all in one piece. There is heart, lungs, and this is the trachea and esophagus. You can tell because it's 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 ridged. And, you know, it's got that uh, that ribbing on it, uh, and that's the uh, the windpipe basically. Okay, once we get the heart and lungs out, uh, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to split the breastbone here. All right. So what I like to do is I like to take my knife, come down in, right behind the breastbone, and we're going to just hold on to the carcass up here, and we're just going to from the tip. The tip should be almost extending down out past uh, the neck here, right? And we're just going to rock the knife down and through the breastbone. And we're gonna split that. Um, 
not necessary for processing, but the reason we like to do that is just to get the rest of this congealed blood out of here as we're rinsing it down. All right, my, my wonderful assistant hands me the, uh, the hose here, and uh, we're gonna just rinse down the rabbit from top to bottom here. Try to get uh, some of the hair and blood. Off of this. Now a lot of this blood is going to come out uh, as it's sitting in the ice water bath, but uh, the more we can get rinsed out here, the better. Yeah. Okay, so we found the easiest way to remove the feet, front and back. I've already showed you the front, so let me show you how to pull the rears now. While you're still in the hopper hanger here, I'm going to come to that knuckle just below where it's hanging and just give it a sniff. You want to keep pressure on there so the snips make it the whole way through. Give it a quick rinse, and in the bucket he goes. All right, so we made it through processing. Now, once it comes to what you're gonna do with the rabbits, now they're gonna to wanna to rest in that ice water about four to six, maybe eight hours. Uh, if you can keep adding ice and keep them chilled, let them rest overnight, uh, and then they're gonna be ready to start packaging up for the freezer. Thank you so much for joining us today in the second video of this series. Go ahead and mash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss the third and final video in this series dealing with the harvesting of rabbits in your cuniculture program. Thanks for watching, and until next time, God bless.